2012, she, she received special recognition, recognition as the scientist gaucher of the foundation to support science in the state of Rio Grande do Sul. Professor Barbosa has summarized herself with, with the word to do, but she does not only love to do research, she also wants, she is also active in the fight against gender inequality in science. Professor Barbosa has pub published several papers on gender equality and was the chair of the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics in the working group of, on the working group on women in physics from 1999 to 2006. For her work in this area, she was award awarded the Nicholson Medal for Human Outreach in 2009 by the American Physical Society. This year, Professor Barbosa received the UNESCO Laureate Award for Women in Science in Latin America. Professor Barbosa, we are looking forward to your talk. that time, it's me. In this, you might notice that the houses are all 
like because I was the daughter of a military. I live in a military village. I have to go to school in a military bus and come back from the school in a military bus. Kind of living in a small bubble where we are trying to be convinced every day that the military was the best thing, not being able to vote or to speak up was the best thing could happen of our life. Of course, we didn't know here that outside people were rebelling against the situation. However, I was a little bit of a problem in my house. My father, that was one guy that would be doing fixing things at home and as any good military would not do anything by himself, would scream many times in the day, Marcia comes to help me to fix this, to fix the, our old car, to fix the roof, to fix everything. And would go very happily because I adore to learn about machines, electricity, how things work. In doing the spirits, I'm asking, why are people outside screaming if the regime was so good? And soon I became a little bit of a problematic daughter. But later on, I went to university at a period of the story of our country in which we start to desire to have high technology. So we have this huge oil company investing a good amount of money in technology. We have also a, a factor of doing employees. It was a moment in which doing technology in Brazil was, was becoming important. So I decided to be part of that. So I went to the university and I wanted to be a physicist. For me, this was a double surprise. First surprise was entering a room like that, 80 students, and we were four girls. Second year, I was by myself. <laughs> so suddenly, I realized I'm, I should not be here. I didn't have professors that were females. I didn't have women around as whole others. But anyway, I continue in the field. I went to my master and my PhD. With a professor, it was very important here saying it's very important to choose the professor. Actually, my choice was for the subject. It was a guy coming from abroad and he brought something that was in theory was very important at that time that was renormalization. I didn't thought twice. I went to work for him. Different from the Brazilian culture, in which you nature people, you take care of people. It's very different from the North Hemisphere. In Brazil, kids are wild, they do whatever they want. Students are babysitted. But my advisor was from abroad. So he treated me like I was in Europe. Actually, he was an Austrian guy. And the first time I went to give a talk, Usually when you do that in Brazil, your advisor is in your side. And if you, someone makes very aggressive questions to you, the advisor jumps to your side and helps you like a father, like a tiger. <laughs> you understand? All the people that they didn't want to hire in psychological schools with this aggressive things, they were all go to physics. <laughs> in physics, you have to interrupt people when they are talking. That's the rule. So I was there presenting my work and suddenly the more aggressive physicist of Brazil that actually was not Brazilian because usually Brazil are trained to be nice and cute but he was not Brazilian jumped again this master degree student and make a very aggressive question. Immediately I looked to my advisor the quiet seat and didn't settle a word. Of course, I jumped, I answered the questions, and over the year, this guy became kind of my worst enemy, even though he was 20 years older. Anyway, uh, and I keep up. The day in which I had to present my PhD, my advisor came to me and said, we have to choose a committee. Usually, this in Brazil is a family thing. You understand? It's all agreed, all is moving. I told him, choose whatever. I don't want this person 
this person, this person, and this person. Guess what? <laughs> I had chosen the committee. <laughs> I remember my mother was sitting in the back of the room with my father, and he had to hold her. She wants to beat the locks. I think this plan is going aggressive question to my I actually survived. And I left my parents' home when I was 18. Actually, in Brazil, you leave your house when you're getting married. And sometimes you get married and you live with your family. But because I was getting on this, and I knew this would be a huge suffering to my dad, I left and I went to live by myself at the age of 18. What made me from, you understand, for the good families, a woman living by herself at that time in Brazil, she might be a very bad girl. <laughs> so I became the bad girl. But I survived, I finished my PhD, and I am as a postdoc to the United States. And that was again a funny story. There was this very famous American physicist that was the creator of randomization group, Michael Fisher. He came to Brazil and in the school. And again, I went to give a talk. And he made a couple of questions I answered, and I got an invitation to be his postdoc. What a good thing, you know, you can see a picture from that time. I'm here, males, 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 as you do in physics. The good thing about Michael, and that he treats everybody equally. You understand? I have a double minus. I am a woman and I am a Latina. You don't see many Latinos in physics. So, but he was fantastic. He treated all his group in the same way. He treated all the students and postdocs equally bad. <laughs> so I thought, say that when we meet, we have this therapy group, you understand, therapy group, we pass by him. We survive. And that period, he started a new field that was a mixture of water, oil, you know, and, and, and was very eager, I was doing theory of that. And I remember coming back to Brazil, I came back to the same institute where I did my PhD was in Brazil at that time, you do the move. I tried really hard to get positions on a part. They looked to me, what's wrong with you that your institute don't want you? You might be very crazy. So finally I decided to go back to Porto Alegre where I did start my own group. In the way back, people would say to me, you are going to Brazil, the earth of nothing, you shouldn't stop doing this because, because this is a very competitive field. You should do some simple, naive things that you can do in a country. Of course, I didn't listen to anybody. I came back to Brazil and I keep on doing uh, surfactant, my promotions here. I'm doing, I start to do some uh, DNA surfactant using the same surfactant I did for oil recovery and itself and start my own small, at that point, research group. This is my first PhD students, a postdoc, and that was a, a, a visiting researcher at that point. During this time, when you come to your own institute and you are advisor is there, they usually think that you are kind of their person. You understand? He is the boss, you should obey. You are the boss. That's the bad thing of coming back to your own institute. I arrived there and I went to him and said, thank you very much for being my advisor, but tomorrow I start my own group. That was a bomb. The director at that time tried to find a way to stop me, but of course I knew the rules, they couldn't stop me, I have a permanent, you know, the jobs in Brazil, they have a good thing, they're permanent. You know, you can do whatever. You can talk bad about the president of the university, he cannot fire you. <laughs> so that, I'm making my own. Then he start to call all the scientists in Brazil and say, she is horrible, she is her, me, and things like that. And I said, and people would ask me, Marcia, what's going on? I said, I'm a bitch. I kicked the guy. You understand? I'm bad. But you know, I'm bad and I'm going to survive. 
So in this stage to my students, you cannot afford to be average. You, we have to be very good. And you have to be very good international. And being international in Brazil means 12 hours flight. That. That we have to enjoy flying. Mm -hmm. So, and I start to be very active in many things in Brazil. We have a moment in which you're opening the country, but we have little resource. So we start to go to Brazilian society and request more money. We have to all organize ourselves. At some point, the International Union for Applied Physics, that the Union of the Union of Physicists, in a meeting in which they have zero women in the council, zero, and they are worried because they have very few PhD students in Europe and in the United States, they thought, oh, maybe we can have women to increase the number of PhD students. So they made this committee this committee. So they asked to each different society, you can see that they have uh, Egyptian, a Chinese, so each society should contribute for women to understand why there are so few women in physics. So then my president of Brazilian Physical Society had this smart idea. Maybe if Marta gets involved with this women stuff, she stopped bugging us about the money for research. Clever idea. So, <laughs> here is the very international group, and even though I was the younger in the group, I became the, the chair of the group, and we decided to do something a little bit different than was requested. They requested a study. We decided to make a conference, a huge conference in Paris. My activity was to find women whatever, in all countries. We have 75 countries in this conference. I use all my international connections to reach women from Uzbekistan to Jordan to every country to have groups. And the groups will bring data. And you discuss this data. And you discuss what you're going to do when you go back to our countries to change the low percentage of women in physics. Already today, Elizabeth showed us in this graph about the presence of women, and the bad, 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 bad number was in physics. Worse than that, here is a plot of the percentage of uh, PhD in the United States. It's a little bit old, but what I want to show you is that not, the numbers are not only bad, this slopes that. It's not changing. With all affirmative action, is not changing. So we decide to look to the numbers. This is a kind of average all over the planet. And this is undergrad. The numbers are not good, 20 something. But then the percentage goes down as you go up in the career. This has nothing to do with brain. This has nothing to do with hormones. This has to do with people leaving the field for some reason. People that have the talent, are eager, they leave. I'm not discussing why it's just 22%. I'm discussing why it's just 12%. Of course, this is highly cultural. If you change the region, if you change the culture, the numbers are going to change. But the slope is fantastically universal. The slope is there. That's the summary of all the slope. The slope is there. And we have to do something. This conference was a major bomb. Because women came back to their countries, they made working groups, and in each country, they kind of design different policies in order to make this change. This is also true, not only in physics, that's, sorry for being Portuguese, but this is against master, complete master, PhD students, finishing PhD, research of different time, types measure in Europe. That's a number of Europe. 
So the percentage goes up for men, the percentage goes down for women, and that's an average for all fields in hard science. So that is a problem. Where are these women going? One, one thing in physics that's true are the stereotypes. I, was, I took a taxi from the airport to, from the... I was in a meeting in Rio before coming here. I took a taxi and I was going to the airport. And I love to talk to taxi drivers because they know what's going on in the city, etc. And they usually ask me, what do you do for a living? I said, well, I am a physicist. He broke the car. He looks bad. He was expecting, he, you look okay for a physicist. <laughs> How many physicists do you know? None. But they are. <laughs> then when I got this prize, L'Oreal Prize, a lot of things, interviews, etc. But one particular journalist did an interview, they just looked at the, the, the picture and said, wow. She looks okay, but she might be crazy. <laughs> I bet she's crazy. So this stereotype is a problem. I did a little research, you know, because in Brazil we have Olympics of the kids, and we realized that the girls are in math 50-50% until they reach 11 years old. By 11 years old, it drops to 20%, the participation of the girls. Something happened. You don't know what, something happened. So I started to do you know, some research with girls at 11 years old, asking them what they dream to be in the future. A typical Brazilian girl at 11 years old wants to be married, two kids, with a nice job, being able to go out dancing. Dancing is very important in Brazil. Going out to be able and wearing very sophisticated makeup. Kids start wearing makeup by the age of eight, going to school and so So it's important. Then I ask, how do you imagine a physicist? Oh, not married, not knowing how to dance, not wearing makeup. Do you know when this girls want, would like to be a physicist? Never. Never. So soon you realize that the stereotype is a big problem for getting it. Then there is a second problem. What you found in this conference is that most female physicists are married with male physicists. <laughs> and then, this stereotype is not helping. It's definitely not helping. So, we have to change that. And we started to do a little, I accept invitations to go to high schools, to undergrad schools, to any TV show, because I'm kind of normal. <laughs> and they might help change a little bit the stereotype. So, problem stereotype. Then the problem of maternity versus career. And again, that's a, a misconception because also we found that most in this conference, that most physicists are actually married with kids. So, you can do it. Don't be afraid. Just face it. It's difficult. You have to work with the barriers, but it's really possible. We have this problem of few home models. And also we have these problems of few women in leadership positions. Because of this conference, as was already mentioned, I got this, this Nicholson Medal of the American Physical Society. That is a very interesting, because in the past they gave this medal to uh, physicists from the United States and some from Europe that were going to underdeveloped countries to teach to poor kids, and you know, people suffering and things like that. So in my speech I said, well, now is the reverse of the coin. Now is the underdeveloped person fighting for the Americas because of affirmative action in the United States is something we don't have all these grants, we don't have that. To get even more money. So it's the counterpart. But it was really fun and enjoyed myself a lot of that. This is my group today, you can see a very happy group of people, but I would like to point out that I have four physicists, I have a, quite a number of female students, what's considered to be quite uh, unusual. With time, the 
always start to be similar to me, what's kind of scary. They always start, then they start to wear mini skirt. <laughs> you know, I don't influence, but they start to copy the day, day style. Actually, this is style has a story that I didn't mention in the past. When I was very young, I went to my first international conference. I'm in front of my poster. People pass like I was transparent. You know, physically don't have women, so you have you don't know what to do with that. You know, I, I felt like I had, you understand, a, a field around me. When I sit there, there's this field, no one could sit around me. So what I do, I went to the posters and I ask questions, and when people are asked questions, they politely ask me back, and you, and they are <laughs> Now I'm old, everybody knows me. And, and a few women that were there, older than me, non Brazilians, came to me and said, Marcia, if you want to succeed in this career, you have to dress more like a man. They might not notice that you are a woman. <laughs> but you might be too sexy, and this is also bad. So at that point, you decide that in all conferences, I wear this <laughs> so now if I wear a trouser, are you sick, Marcia? Do you have any problem? So I wear a mini skirt. Sometimes, you know, physicists are aggressive but very honest. You know, this uh, politically correct didn't reach this field yet. So I was on, in a conference that was a four month in Santa Barbara, very beautiful place. And we have every day huge discussion. We took a topic, you know, like something really on the edge, and we would discuss, discuss until we reach some agreement. And one day, a colleague at the end of the discussion, he lost shamefully for me. He came and said, I lost because your perfume disturbed me in the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for you. I think with my neurons, if you think with your hormones, it's not my problem. <laughs> so sometimes they really try to stop you. But you can go on, and here's just to summarize a little bit, I start to work with water, and one of our findings was related to the high diffusivity of water, and for this finding is that I got the L'Oreal Prize on women in physics. This was a problem again. We, are, we only think we are so smart. In the year 2000, I, I was working with this mixture of uh, DNA and colloids and pattern and looking at the simulations. And what I was treating just a dilatic constant. I said, no, no, no. Let me study for a month or two water. I learned everything and then I come back to this. Have been 10 years just looking to water because water is actually very complicated and now it's starting to go to different fields. Because of my uh, being an active scientist and being in this international picture of women in physics, at some point I decided to look to Brazil, to the Brazilians, uh, statistics in physics. And we have a national open CV. That's fantastic. Each researcher has a CV online that anybody can look at. Okay? It's a national open CV. And we have a committee that gives all the money to the scientists. And they open a grant proposal and which they say to apply to this, you have to be top as 1A or you have to look 1A like. What the hell is this? So I decided to look what the 1A, 1B, all the levels they look like. So I requested the data, organized data from the, for them. They said, obviously they said no. But then I have this wonderful undergrad student that opened a thousand cities. It counted the number of students, the number of publications, the number of citations, the number of whatever. And I did distributions. And I found that to enter in the system, you know, to be lower level, the women have to publish twice 
the Nana. And to go to the last step, you have to publish twice. That was a major bomb because the Brazilians always believe because we have the open CDs that we are fair. Because of this, I enter in the committee. Here's a picture of the committee that give all the, the money. I have 20 people there. There is one single woman, that's me, here again. And I was the head of the committee for the first time in the history of the head of the committee. And of course, we succeed to make many things. And one of the things is that now when we have a baby, we have to steer discounted from your history from being analyzed because many times we are discussing the open CV and say, well, this person, she didn't publish a single paper in this year. And I said, this year have a name, it's my year. And we have, you know, just this eye that was very simple. And of course, we don't have that only for physics because we have to re regulation. I make it sure that it was for all fields. And this is valid not only for researchers, for PhD students, for master's degree students. They all get an extension of their fellowships when they have kids. Still, it's one woman and 20 men. This is the council that advised the president. It's like me and 30 people, one woman. And that's now the council of the I, I, International Union for Applied Physics. Now we have one woman, I became the vice president. But remember when they start the question, they had three women, and it is now we are improving. So things are improving, but they require uh, things. Of course, now I'm the head of the institute, there are the good parts and there are the bad parts. I have to you know, wear Santa in the Christmas, and you can see our Santa have to be light because Christmas is 40 centimeters. It's summertime <laughs> and participating in different committees uh, is also a burden but I split very much my day in the time in which I'm doing science and I'm doing administration and of course because I want to show that women are normal, physicists are normal uh, and we, we do a lot of open days for students from the high school to visit us and we should tell about our research. We are actually give talks in bookstores and schools. So in this way also people can uh, realize that science is fun and that women can be present in, in, in science as well. And this is my research group today. Very much, if they like to call it my glee style. So they are, we are having a party. If time someone finishes a PhD, we have a party and they can picture out. We have plenty of girls in our group. And now we are advancing. Now we are studying water uh, more correlated to biosystem. The thing that I proposed myself to do 20, uh, 10 years ago, now I'm having the chance to do a little bit of this. And of course, I'm now getting older. When we get old, we get all these prizes that have been a great, great opportunity to talk to the press. And with this, having some, you know, nice pictures, so people say, oh, this is this can be normal and can be women." And and finally, that's the uh, L'Oreal uh, UNESCO uh, prize picture. That was really a great opportunity to talk about science, to know really outstanding uh, physicists. But of course, besides science, besides politics, you have to find a niche for life. And here is my life companion. We are visiting Rio de Janeiro. Now, of course, we are visiting the biggest stadium of soccer. Brazilians have to do that. Sorry for that. And that's the part of 50 years of the institute in which of course you have to dance, that's Brazil. My family, brother, and you know, cousins and everybody, my girlfriends going to party, none is a scientist, they do other things. And my second love, the Shrek, when I did visit London, I didn't resist to visit uh, Shrek there. And that's it, thank you.
result means that the women leave physics as we progress in the career is common in every country. However, Latin countries in which the daycare situation is kind of dissolved by the family, everybody lives around, and countries like in France where you have some daycare or a structure, the situation is a little bit better. Also, Portugal and Spain, that are countries in which being scientists is not high ranked uh, profession, we are going to find more women. So it's a kind of a slope, just shift the numbers. So we start with a bigger number, whatever country in which being a scientist is not a you know, high handled salary, the numbers are better. A big surprise was where the Arab countries, in which the interest, the undergrad, were quite huge. You know, we have an Egyptian in our working group, and she mentioned that uh, the reason behind that, they can study until, or have a career, until they get married. Then they have to choose wisely the husband, so the husband will allow them to keep on. And more than the husband, the mother of the husband, because she spend a year abroad because she left the kids with the mother of the husband while she was working abroad. So it's, there are a lot of cultural influence on the data, but in all the data, the women were leaving the profession in numbers, much bigger numbers than the numbers of the men. And then, in each country, this would have a different story behind. The reasons many times were, were like in Brazil was prejudice. Good show because it's not possible. You have a, a system in which is completely based in numbers because we have to see these with the numbers. The, having to have twice the number of publications was unacceptable. Of course, during the years in which I was head of the committee, this was properly corrected. But again, even having the same numbers is unfair. Because during the period in which the, the women have the kids, the number of publications increase, so we have to discount that. So it's, it's one step after the other, but already making people recognize that there is a problem is already a big step. Year. 
one of the pictures that show um, this Russian guy that was living in the US and he made a mistake to marry a Brazilian that was homesick. And one day I have this guy, a very brilliant physicist, in my office saying, I have to stay in Brazil because my life, my wife lives here. So I found him a fellowship that at the first opening was for four years. After the first six months, the government told me that it was, was a mistake, it was just two years. And after the first year, it was one year and a half. You understand, for someone planning, I understand the country, I found other fellows that found the way through, but it's a country in which research is full of surprises. Funding are not given at the proper time, so it's very, very challenging. It's, it's, it becomes hard. 
you know, to. And the mechanism I, I use is that I never give up anything that I like to do. And I don't feel awkward for doing that. You know, so they all the time was trying to put me in that box, the box of the guys in physics. And you should not, and, and it's worse because you understand that Latinos have this feel of guilt, you should not look too happy. Physicists are serious, Marcia. Every conference I went in physics, I organized a dancing party. Yes, I do that in my country. I'm doing it here. You know, actually, the, the guys didn't like that much, but the wives love it. Get married or go to the cinema or whatever. 